Bree Walker, we are back. Uh, we're going to get into the part three, but uh, before we get into the part three, man, I got a couple things I want to talk about today. Uh, man, you know I was fasting last week, and uh, a, uh, a, a, a friend of mine, uh, somebody that I, I recently married, she hit me up, and uh, she was asking me about fasting, so I, I sent her one of my sermons, and she watched it. And a uh, uh, shout out, shout out to her for Tracy for for actually going and look at it. Shout out to her for actually getting the knowledge of it and being able to spit it back to me verbatim. That was that that is beyond supporting somebody. That is actually diving in what I what the word of God said with me and actually bringing it back and being able to spit it back to me verbatim. That is fire under my butt. That that a lot of fire under a minister. That'll light a fire under a, a artist. If they, they do music, write songs, if you can come back and sing their lyrics to them, that would really drive somebody. So I first want to give a shout out to Trace for that. I really appreciate that. Uh and anybody who does that, if you if you if you really get some out of this stuff, man, shoot it back to me. Let me know you got it. Let me know it hit home. Let me know you felt it. That 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 lights a fire under other people to, to keep them going, to keep them going. Cause uh People don't support as, as, as much as they like to think they do. Hmm. But uh, but I digress. Come on. Back to what I was talking about. I've been fasting. Uh, I need a new belt. <laughs> I need some. I, my pants is loose. They've been falling off me all day. I've been feeling like these youngsters. Like, I'm on the last belt hole. I can't even get the belt no more. Fasting really works, man. I mean, why would we let food control us like that? I'm not talking about big people, but you ever seen somebody who's on one of those uh, diets where it's, it's, they took the end, uh, not to the end of their life, but just where they can't even enjoy good food anymore. They've got to constantly eat healthy every meal, and they look at their food like it did something to them. You know, they're just staring at the carrots, or they're staring at the celery, or they're just staring at the broccoli, and then everybody around them is eating fried chicken and biscuits and bread, beans, and rice, and they're just looking around the table and you people just right in front of me, eating their broccoli like oh, You know, you do you want to be that? No. Fast. Work out. People sweat sometimes. Go outside, do something. Please, don't let food control you. Don't die by the Twinkie. Don't die by the cinnamon roll. Don't die behind the honey bug. Please, people, fast. Work out. Sweat sometime. Uh, but so what we talk about this week, part three. End of times. End of times, part three. End of times, part three. We've been rolling through Second Timothy. Uh, and, and not so much talking about uh, uh, prophesying on mountains crumbling and and tsunamis, that's that's not my thing. The word says no man knows. So to sit here and try to prophesy, unless God send you something and tell you, and charge, sometimes God tell you something, then he'll charge you not to tell you, as we know in the Bible, uh, as he did with many people. He, he, he did miracles for them and then charged them not to tell them, even though they still weren't told. Because when you come in contact with Jesus, you just want to tell somebody, amen? That's why we all doing what we're doing, because we actually touched them. Amen. Come on. Uh, so when you get touched by Jesus, you just want to tell them. But sometimes God will tell you things. Jesus will tell you things. And he'll charge you not to tell people. Uh, and we have to be mindful of that, you know. Uh, but if you put something on your heart to tell the world, you tell the world. And again, we are all called. I hear people be out there talking about, oh, you a minister. You shouldn't be talking like that. You a minister too. You are a minister too. Who lied to you and told you you weren't a minister? Who lied to you and told you your life is for you, your mom, and your daddy to have some power? You are here to glorify him and him only. That is your life. Everything you own belongs to him. I don't know who lied to y'all, but somebody need to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you what God, what God loves, and that's the truth. Amen? Come on. But that's the way people think these days. I'm supposed to. I'm, I'm, I'm me. I'm a person. I I can have a sense of humor. I can tell you shut the f up. I don't want to hear that because I'm a minister. But that doesn't mean I'm I'm infallible. Or I'm I'm inhuman. Or I don't have feelings. Or I'm just your punching bag. Or I'm just supposed to 
uh, uh, constantly give to you and never ask any in return. No, that's not. That's just not being a person. That's not being human. I am not Jesus. Jesus didn't need her. That nigga still killed him. But what he asked in return was for all of us to praise him and glorify his name. Amen. And we all don't do that. So even he don't get the return. It's not about that. Let people be people. You know, let people be whole people. Human beings, husbands, uh, uh, fathers, brothers, homeboys, friends, acquaintances, co-workers, as well as a minister. Don't put people in these little old boxes like they, they got to be put in a box and now they can't be a real person. That's just, hmm. And the last thing I want to get on out there, it is election year. My Republican people out there, leave me your ears for a second. We have argued and fought with y'all the worst we have ever fought with y'all. And I'm not saying y'all as in I'm a Democrat because I don't like them much right now either. But I'm just saying it tends to be the, you know, the Republican, you know, people who waver to that side. Not waver, people who on that side. I, I don't have no problem with y'all being on that side. I really think it works a lot better if America has a push and a pull and it's two sides and we got something else. To, to try to push the narrative. I think the narrative has got stuck in gear and we need to be pushing it and not each other. But I think having the two sides, I think having the third will be a better to balance. But mm, sometimes you got three, you just cancel a lot too. Uh, you know, maybe four would be better. I don't know. Maybe it needs to be some other parties. Uh, and maybe four would be better because we can really see what's going on. Uh, but again, I digress. What I say is we don't want to fight with y'all this year. <laughs> we don't want to fight with y'all this year. We don't want to do it. We don't want to do it. Please stop talking to us about the Sunday. Please stop talking to us about the Please stop talking to us about Trump. Please. 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 We have fought with y'all the worst we're going to fight with y'all ever. We don't want to fight no more. Just go vote who you're going to vote for and leave it alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh, y'all, woo, y'all just giving me the blues. I can't even. Oh, y'all, mm, don't nobody want to hear it no more. Don't nobody want to hear it no more. We don't. Oh, Lord Jesus, don't nobody want to hear it. No more. Hey, y'all, got come on, God. Give, let's get some praying. Come on, let's get this going. Get to this word. Let's get some praying. Y'all bow your head in with me. Oh, Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you. <laughs> thank you for giving me the strength to be here. You woke me up this morning. I thank you. You gave me the word without to be right here to read the word and come and bring it to him. And I thank you for the ones out there listening. I thank you for the ones watching. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. May it be more of you, less of me. May you flow freely and may they receive it in Jesus name. Hey, man, come on, y'all. Let's see. Uh, where we at now? Uh, we uh, we are in uh, Second Timothy. We're still in Second Timothy. Let's go. Give me Second Timothy two. Uh, 14 through 18. 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy uh, 2. 14 through 18. Church with me now. And it says, dealing with false teachers. Because more than talk about all these, these mountains crumbling and all that stuff, we're talking about how people are going to be. Because you, I like to gauge the people. Like I say, check the temperature of people. There's a lot of things you can check the temperature of people. Uh, things uh, that you can use to check the temperature of the earth just to see what people are. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, hitting up to the spot at the sicko and, 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 and that episode is going to be called What's Your 20? Just to see what people are. After all this fighting and all the, again, Republicans, we don't want to fight no more. After all this stuff that happened in America, all this stuff that happened, what's your 20? Where are you at? Where are you at on your spiritual walk? Where are you at with God? Where are you at? Period. With spiritually, emotionally, where are you at with uh, with bills? Where are you at financially? Did you change the way you make money? Uh, did you get new sources of income because you had to? What did you do? Where are you at? Come on. But in these last days, we need to know how other people are going to be. The false people. And this is telling you dealing with false teachers, which we're going to have some in those last days as we got now. Come on. 14 in church with me now. Say amen. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. 
Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed of who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teachings will spread like gangrene among them in the hymnless in the philitis. And what did I say? Uh, 18. Yes. So, uh, right there. Uh, Back to the top. 14. He says, keep reminding people, keep reminding God's people of these things. I am here twice a week, sometimes more than that when I'm fasting, uh, you know, uh, in my 30-day run. I'm fasting, uh, when I'm fasting for 30 days or uh, early in the year, you won't catch me preaching every day. Uh, warn them about God's, about God. Before, I'm sorry, warn them before God against quarreling about words. What I just said, Republicans, we don't want to fight no more. All this fighting ain't getting us nowhere. Arguing with you people on Facebook ain't getting me nowhere. I started a whole group, and it turned to the biggest argument I ever seen. I mean, it was, I, I, I want to say about two to 400 people up in that group. And boy, I'm talking about the fights. Oh, my Jesus. And then the side fights that broke out for them fights. Oh, people were fine. It was so much drama. I just backed away from the whole gray room. Just, woo. That, man, I don't need that. I left three women because I didn't want to fight and, and argue the rest of my life. Why would I start a group and then take on 395 kids and five uh, administrators and a partner just so I can administrate some arguments? That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted people to move, come together and do something. They just want to argue. Man, come on. They ain't going to get us nowhere. Come on. So I'm going to get all these coarse words. Don't argue with me. I ain't trying to argue with you. We can talk back and forth. But as soon as it becomes that argument stuff, you, you probably about two posts from getting blocked. I'm going to tell you that for real. It is of no value. There ain't no value to me in this. I did, half the time you're arguing with somebody, you didn't even you're not even talking to them. You're addressing the person that I was arguing with some dude. I'm addressing a politician. And I said, well, why should I even vote for you? Before the politician could even reply back to me, I end up in a whole argument with this man calling me a racist. First thing he told me, Biden was racist. He got mad because I laughed at him. I said, isn't Biden's best friend black? Literally Obama? Oh, you racist too. I'm racist. The person with a white and Mexican wife, the black, the pro-black brother with a white and Mexican wife is racist. Hmm. Yeah, I think you, I don't know, bro. I think you barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wrong tree. Just, um, yeah, you literally barking up the wrong tree. Like, I don't, I'm racist? Hmm. I, I, I might be a bigot, but racist, race. I, <laughs> I got best friends. It's German and Italian. That's that's my dog. Like that's my brother. His mama's my mama. His daddy's my dad. His sister's my sister. Are you crazy? Me racist? Bro, I got a racist bone in my body. But they want to fight. That's when you know you're in the last days when people just want to fight and they want to call you on stuff that ain't even you. Couldn't be you. Now maybe I've been racist in the past. Man, I was so pro-black in the nineties. You ask anybody. I asked anybody who went to late high school. The black people wall was kind of racist. <laughs> if I tried the black people wall, I mean, it was racist. And then the way I took it out, I would literally push. I mean, I shoved you all the way down that hall if you lean up on the black people wall. You was white, and they respected it. I, to me, that's just straight out racist. That was that was flat out racist. But my mind was in the right place. I wanted to show black pride. I, I came from a place of black pride in Alabama and Mobile. We, we was prideful of our black. And we love blackness. It, but I didn't know how to express it. I was in culture shock. I don't know if y'all realized it when I first got here. I was in culture shock. I went from having only three or four white kids in the whole school to being the only three or four black kids in a class. It was in culture shock. And I dealt with it after breaking my hip and being traumatized. I dealt with it in a very angrily way, and it was racist sometimes. I can admit mine, can you? Come on. Uh, 
and only ruins those who listen. That's why I say, man, we're not going to argue. You sit there and listen to these fools, man. Don't sit there and argue with nobody. You can go back and forth. As soon as the argument, I mean, the 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 the, the juxtaposition of words, as soon as the, and you could argue as far as stating to, you know, debate. You could debate, have two two sides. But as far as to get with all the name calling and we're not even talking about the subject matter no more or what the post was about, I'm not going to do that with people. Now, I don't mind sharpening sword on sword and learning from other people. I think you can in small, minute parts, but I'm really not going to read your three-scroll post in Facebook. I'm telling you that now. I didn't come there for read. I read books and other stuff to get knowledge. I read the Bible to get knowledge. But whenever I'm talking to you, uh, and, and we're having a conversation that is totally different if I'm communicating you. But these people who I hit you with one or two lines and you got this three scroll post, man, I'm not reading that. I'm not reading that. Again, you're probably arguing there's no value to me. Because it took you that much. You had to say that much. I said two lines. It took you three scrolls. It's no value to me. Come on. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. But I'm not looking for you people approval. Those days are over. My people bunch is done. That yoke is broken. That chain is ripped. It's out of here, bro. I don't care what people say like that. No. If you like me, cool. But my acceptance is coming from him. It is an audience of one. Come on. A worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of the truth. Man, you think I'm ashamed of anything I do? No, I'm not. If I do, that's what I do. It's not a shame thing. Like, whatever I do, I do. <laughs> hey, <laughs> make me think of, uh, ooh, I can't say his name. They didn't cancel him, huh? <laughs> well, I'm saying it. Harry Spears on one of his stand-ups. He's a funny guy. I don't care what to say. That, that skit was off base and real. Ugh, a lot of his stuff is off base. And real. But uh, he's had funny stand-ups. And one of his jokes... <laughs> It was there's something sexually that everybody does. If anybody found out about time, you had to leave town. If, if, if anybody found out about you, just so nasty. Now, I believe that's slightly true. I think everybody has some, some just like, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. but that's your business. With your wife, hopefully you're doing it with your wife, your husband. You single people out there, you need to find, ooh, I, I, I'm praying for you single people, but you need to find somebody and just do it with your person. Stop doing them streets, but, uh, that's like the Bible says the bed the, the bedroom is undefiled between a married couple. So you can be as freaky as you want to. That's why I get marriage counseling. I tell people all the time, hey, if you're you're not paying attention to the freak side of your marriage, you're gonna have trouble. Uh I told my my, my many of my married friends, hey, your wife's got a freak inside of it. It's your job as your husband to find it and bring it out and make sure it is satisfied. The same for her. This is some. This is a part of submission, and sex is a part of marriage. It is made by God for you to enjoy, people. Don't you let nobody make you feel ashamed for how y'all enjoy it. Amen. Come on. So, fifteen. I'm sorry. Sixteen. Avoid godless chatter. I will talk to you about some of this politics and this stuff. I'll go back and forth, but really, I want to know where y'all at spiritually. Where you at with God? And that's the most important thing. Because if you're in the right place with God, then you're probably going to be in the right place in the rest of your life. Because he's going to have you there on your path. God takes care of those things. When you give him the time, when you give him the glory, when you praise him, he shows you those other things in business. He shows you other sources of income. He shows you other ways to touch people. He shows you other ways for your ministry to grow. He shows you other ways for your job to get better, to make more money. He shows you other ways to parent better. He shows you how to be a better spouse, how to be a better lover. He shows you how to be a better friend, a better brother, a better sister. He shows you these things, people. But you have to give him the time. And all this godless chatter. Why? Oh, why do we care about everybody getting divorced? Oh, man, they put on blast every divorce. Do they ever tell you about all the marriages that's happening every day to people who are actually still in love? Come on. Because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Let me tell you about another conversation I had on Facebook. Didn't block this young lady. It actually ended up in a laughing moment because she got it. She finally got it. Uh, the question was asked, 
what is something nobody uses anymore. And a lot of people say common sense. I would agree with that a lot. Not any, but it said anybody. So that means all of us. I use common sense data because a lot of people still use a lot of older people, but there are people still using it. So I wouldn't say, I said disposable cameras. Nobody uses disposable cameras no more, but some people still do. There's one or two. There's some old ladies out there somewhere, but I don't know who they are, but it's not many. But disposable cameras, I don't think that's there's a market for that anymore. So that's something we don't use. A lady said faith. And immediately, I used to just have inward senses. I'm just saying, I'm black. People don't 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 judge me. And I ain't gonna say it. You know I would slip up inward in there in a second, but I used to have inwards. I still got them. They still work. They still work, believe me. They go off anytime around real racist people. But I also have minister senses now. And she said faith in my minister sense went off and said, hold on, sister. Hold on, sister. I sense that you are a Christian. Did you say people don't use their faith? Oh, I use my faith every day. This is how I pay my bills. I have to have the faith. I'm going to go out there and find the business and be able to pay these bills. That's why I have a business and don't have a job. I have to have the faith to get that next money every day. When you got a job, you want, you need the faith to, to, to that they're going to pay your check. You need the faith that you can make it through the day without choking somebody. But it's a different type of faith. It's a different type of faith. When you got a business, it isn't that I don't have that struggle. My struggle is finding the business and making sure it's enough. Amen. But I activate it all the time. And I feel like a lot of people activate their faith. I really think that faith is not the problem. I think people have faith in the wrong places these days. Amen. Come on. But she said faith. And I said, speak for yourself. So that's that's not something I think you can say, you know, faith involves God. And I think you can speak for God for everybody or anybody you don't personally know on their walk with God. I think that's just something you shouldn't do when it's wrong. But she, she again, it turned into a slight argument, a, a debate, if you would. An argument, even. But it turned into that. And she said, uh, well, it's just a fact that people don't use that anymore. I said, how is that a fact when I use mine? So if people, I'm a person. So if one person uses it, they say if it's one, then you let that be two touching. Two will put 10,000 to flight. Come on, don't sit here and tell me you don't know this as a Christian. Now, at this point, she hadn't revealed to me she was a Christian. It was the next thing she said to me after I told her, uh, you know, I, I just think you're wrong. And I think that's wrong. And, and, and I pointed out some ways that I, people activate their faith. And I don't think that's for you to say. You don't, you don't know everybody. But she also wanted to point out to me that her faith was intact. If your faith is intact, how could you include yourself in a us that don't use faith? You see how your mouth is all of a sudden becoming your enemy? Life or death in the power of the tongue. She said nobody's using faith, but she said she had faith. How can you have it if nobody's using it? Your mouth is killing yourself, people. And I wanted, I pointed this out to her. Come on, sister, you can't say. If you have faith, then there's no us not using faith. It's because... Your mouth, because you're arguing so much about ungodly stuff, you're just getting far away from God. And she pointed out that she was a Christian. I said, and, and my, my comment to her was, well, ma'am, I'm, I'm just a minister. I'm just trying to do my job. I just wanted to point out that there was people using faith, and faith still exists, because that's my job. And she said, well, I'm just a Christian. I'm doing my job. And again, minister senses are just going crazy now. Because you said as a Christian, your job was to tell people they don't have faith. I thought it was exactly the opposite. It's to put faith in the people. That is, it is, may know I thought it is. It is exactly the opposite. It's not your job as a Christian to tell people they don't have faith, to put people down, to make them feel bad. It is not your job to make people feel ashamed. It is not your job to condemn people and have them feel condemnation. It is not your job as a Christian. It is the opposite. You're supposed to put faith and love and compassion and hope into these people who told y'all that's your job. It's not. You have been twisted. Come on. 17. The teachings will spread like gangrene. See, the devil, your father of lies, have infected y'all. So much you didn't realize it's in your speech. And that's why I come out like that. And then he goes on to say among the and he's talking to Timothy, so he's talking about some cities that are hard to pronounce. But, you know, you know, me being country, that's going to be hard. But let's go to the next one. Hey, I, and I don't want to get too bad on you. I want to finish this one up on a good note because I felt like, you know, we get a little dark there. Because I got 
I got to give it to you real. And the realness of it is a dark world right now we live in. It's a dark world. It's a dark place. Uh, so it's going to get a little dark when we're talking about it. Amen. But let's finish up on a good note. Uh, because, uh, and, and, and look, in my notes here it says, they will tell the story or skew it. They will twist it because when their instructions fail, their faith will fail. I hate to tell that sister, but she, she put faith up there because her faith had failed her at one time. See, my faith is not failing me, so I'm never going to put out that faith not working. My prayers work for me, so I'm not going to put out that prayers not working. My fasting works for me, so I'm not going to put out that fasting is not working. I'm putting out that what's working because I know it's working, so I know it exists in this world. And if it's in me, greater in he is in me than in the world. Oh, my God. Come on, Christians. Come on, Christians. All you got to do is have it inside of you, and greater in he is in me than in this world. This is what upset me about somebody talking about Christian, and you're just displaying anti-Christian stuff. Like you don't even know the word. Like you never even high five God one day. You never looked up at God and said, thank you for my wife. Ooh, did you see her? <laughs> I high five them all the time. I just look, hey, if I didn't tell you today, thank you. I, but I, you got to know his word, people. Because some of y'all are calling yourself Christians and you out there using the words of the enemy. Come on. Let's go to the last one. Let's finish this meal, y'all. Let's finish this meal. Let's go. 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 10. We're going to finish on a positive note. I ain't going to leave you with the doom and gloom, as they say. 1, Timothy 1, uh, and 6 through 10. Timothy 1, 6 through 10. Uh, just hang on. There we go. First, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 10. And it says, this is a, a appeal for loyalty to Paul and the gospel. Church with me there. Say amen. For the reason, I remind you to fan into the flames the gift of God, which is in you through the land of my hands. For the spirit of God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. The grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. Bars. Come on. Come on. Let's go back to the top. He says, six. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flames the gift of God. Man, I tell you all the time. It is not by making big fires in the game. It's about getting a little fire here, a little fire there, a little fire there, a little fire there, and banging that sucker to the roof. That's a fire. That's what you want. Stop trying to make a big fire in your life. Just get you a little kindle. Kindling. Ooh, my wife be happy. I say the word right because I, I call it kindling. I'm country as I don't know what. <laughs> she be like, it is not no such word as kindling. It is in Alabama. <laughs> it's kindling. <laughs> But you get you some of that. You get your little, and you get to get that smoke. You start a little fire there. You start a little there. You start that now. You put all these fires together, and you got a big flame. Now you're ready to burn that thing. That's how you make a fire. That's how you get some stuff on fire. Uh, but you should be getting that fire inside of you. That gift of God. That ministry inside of you. You. Everybody has a ministry. Every one of us are charged to do this. I don't know who told you you what. I know who did tell you you would, and I take that back. I do. He was the father of lies, and most of us are living with him. Come on, y'all. Which is in you through the land of my hands. When you got baptized and he grabbed you and dunked you down, the land of hands, two touching. See, when you grab hands and pray together and two is touching, man, it is power. In two touching, in two in agreement. That is power and covenant in that thing. And people don't realize you grab your hands with these people out here and you say something else. You pick up on these memes and you are two in agreement. 
Oh, I, I, I didn't really mean that for my life. I just thought it was funny. You shared it. You touched it. You shared it. You shared it from somebody to somebody else. Two in agreements. Watch what you're saying with your mouth. Watch what you're posting in these memes. It's a meme that's funny this week. Two months later, it's in your life. It's not so funny. Come on. Seven. For the spirit of God gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self discipline Man, look. Uh, Second Timothy. One. Seven. If you look at my Facebook page, I'm pretty sure that's up there. It's one of my favorites too. For he did not give us spirit of timid, but he gave us power, love, and self-discipline. Uh, some say a sound mind. Self-discipline is fasting. You have to self-discipline yourself. You're not going to get the bag and you're spending it all the time. If, if you're... Uh, what are, shout out to Showcase. I ain't even trying to point that out, homie. You, 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 you know I ain't never got no hard feelings. But Showcase say, if I ever get rich, I'm just going to go to my, my wish list. I got like six. His shopping cart full. Because we all, and, and I'm not that bad. I got like two things in there. I got something for a new business I started. Two items. And if I didn't start that business, I wouldn't have nothing in there. I'm just not a, I get what I need, and I'm just not a shopper like that. But he said, it, 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 I, I guess it's a thing now. Amazon makes it easy. I mean, it's easy, man. You order, when could you order something to be in your house in two days? Some of this stuff be that tomorrow. It's amazing to me. I mean, ooh, it's just really amazing, but it can turn you into, my daughter, you know, well, she got a good job now, and I tell her all the time, it's okay. Did you save some money this month? Yeah, I saved some money, Dad. Well, spend some, too. It's okay to spend. You're going to splurge. You're 20-something. You ain't got no kids. Girl, please, spoil yourself. You got that degree. You a school teacher. You did that. Go, no, no. You did that. All the way. But save, huh? Once you get to that number, let me know because daddy's going to help you with the investments. Huh? Did you did you buy into the teacher retirement and all this stuff? Go ahead. It might not be that when you get there, but you might be able to borrow it on later on when you need a house. Amen? Come on, buddy. I'm telling her things. But everybody spends. As long as you're saving, you're okay. But you can get out of hand. You can get out of hand. Be self-disciplined. self Discipline out there. See the country that's come out of me. But love. Again, this woman was not coming from a place of love. People are not coming from a place of love. If I'm arguing with you, bro, I'm not trying to do you nothing. I promise you I'm not trying to do you nothing but love you. Love you past the, 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 the hate in your heart. Love you past the bigotry you spit. Love you past the, 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 the division you have in your words. Love you past the, 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 the lack of compassion that you have for the other side. Power. People, we actually come together and stop arguing. We have power. It says power in numbers. Two in the greens. You don't need a lot. My daddy say one food is just a food, but two foods make a whole new world. That is the power of two in the greens. My daddy talked street like he was because he was in them streets. He was a roofer. He did his thing, but he was in them streets more than most people know because I was on the road with him. I fought gangsters with him. I had to go get the truck when the dope fiends and took the work truck and even sold it to the dope man because he been smoking. He just smoked his whole checkup and after he smoked his checkup, he sold my daddy truck many times. And then after it was my daddy truck, it became my car. I'm 18, 19 year old and my uncles and cousins and everybody who's smoking it, they taking my car, running out with it. Now I'm the one with the baseball bat want to beat him with it. Yeah, I've been there. In them streets with him. But I learned two people in them streets. Oh my God, when it's one of you, it's just one of you, but two. It's a whole new world. It's power in two in agreements. And we have that. So why be timid? You got power, love, and self-discipline given to you by the Spirit. Come on, y'all. So don't be ashamed of your testimony. I wish I would. I wish I would. I wish I would not be ashamed of, of how much he has ran and touched my life. People, how can you believe in something that uh, you pray to white men? Uh, man, I don't know what y'all pray to and who you believe, but you cannot unteach this out of me. You can't take this out of me. Best you could do, if you don't like it and you don't want to hear it, bro, you can try to kill me for it. But boy, I tell you, I'm going to work a 40-hour work week on your butt if you play it run up over here. Uh, I'm going to work a whole 40 hours right down you. In, in about three minutes, I'm going to put 40 hours of this roof on you. I don't think you want them problems, bro. 
I don't think you want them problems. But I'm self-disciplined. So better yet, I'm going to try to love you because I'm exercising power and not whooping that tail. Amen? No, I'm not popping, popping out shots at you. No, I'm exercising power. Come on. Come on. But rather, join me in suffering of gospel by the power of God. I say rather. I digress. Why don't you come over here and talk to this word about me, bro? Why don't you go ahead and talk to me and tell me where you at? And yo, what's your 20 right now? Where you at? Where you at right now? Huh? He saved us and called us to a holy life. Man, we are not supposed to be getting worse. We're supposed to be getting better. That means physically too. Physically too. Physically too, people. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. Physically too. You ain't just supposed to get that degree in that woman. I mean, and, 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 and that money, uh, women out there. Stop just getting the bag and letting the bag grow in front of your stomach. Come on. Uh... Not because anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. You know why he give you that? Because this is what you're supposed to be doing. His grace. We don't we didn't do nothing to get it. Grace, you don't do nothing to get grace. It's giving freely. But his own purpose. You know say, oh, God's got us. God has a path for all of us. When people say that, they're, they're not just saying that to one person. They, ooh, they say that to everybody because he does think about everybody like that individually. That's how good he is, man. Come on. Grace given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Before the beginning of time, he did. How, can y'all uh, phantom that? Before the beginning of time, he knew about your retarded self. He knew everything about you before the beginning of time. Can you comprehend that? Your daddy didn't know you was going to be here. And he all amazed you. Your mama didn't know you was going to be here. And she carried you and birthed you. And he still knew you. Before you was in your mother's womb. Come on. But he has not been revealed through the appearing, it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. You want to live forever? Immortality to the light. You ain't got to be a vampire to live forever. You can be a Christian. Immortality. Live forever. My sister, shout out to Vicky, my sister, uh, sister, uh, sister, uh, sister, uh, she said, uh, what did she say? She said something about dying or something. And I, I, no, we live forever. We live forever, sis. We live forever, sis. We live forever. We don't die. We go up there. Mama up there waiting for you. You think mama ain't up there waiting for you? Come on. Uh, see? It's my peoples. Come on. Uh, destroy it. It's about life. Destroy death. Everybody rising back up. Oh, man, you talk about a party. How many people lost some people they miss? He will make that happen. Destroy life and brings, and destroy death and brings life and immortality. And now you with them forever. In the presence of the Lord, man, I don't know what in the world is worth that. If you can tell, somebody put in the comments, Something worth than going to heaven and being with your family members you miss forever. And when the ones that are younger than you, the ones you don't even see born, you get to be with them when they, where else you trying to go? Where else you want to be? Who else you want to be with? Who you with? Oh, Jesus, come on. Oh, man, y'all, this guy real good. Shout out to all my people out there. But, y'all, this is a good one. This Bible study, you know, I like to get deep with it. And it got good, man. I like when I, you know, I don't write sermons. I just put the Bible verses on there and I go with it. I let the Spirit lead me. That's why I say flow freely. I'm a freestyle artist. I run a verse on you real quick. Ain't nothing like writing down. But who? sometimes I'm in that zone and I just run it on you like that. Let's yeah. just run it. Just pop that thing and put the mic on and let's fire it up. That's how I preach my sermons. I like it. Like I like the Spirit to flow through me and use me. I don't want to premeditate it. I might have been thinking then, but now I'm right here. Amen. 
and you right here with me, and I sure appreciate it. Hey, man, it's been He Speaks with Kareem Walker for another good one. Hey, man, y'all pray for me. I'm going to pray for y'all. Y'all be safe out there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night.